Okay, well, I hope that you've got a good understanding on how powerful um, setting up structural models in this type of way can be. Um, we've, we, we've, we're basically at the point where any changes we make um, back at the start in terms of our um, geometry, um, in terms of um, the, the number of bays, um, uh, what the bay width is, um, can, can automatically or, or parametrically be defined. Um, and we can simply go from, from that to a structural analysis model, which has um, everything um, already there um, with the ability for us to, to reanalyze and get, and get real-time feedback. So what I'm gonna do now is start to show you how you can quickly set up um, some of these, uh, some of the different types of analysis within Grasshopper um, to, I guess, basically test your structural performance without having to, um, I guess, analyze in space gas and, and review results um, in space gas. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, well, the, the probably the mo one of the most important um, aspects of this structure are these rafter beam members, um, and the deflection of what, and I guess the deflection you're going to see um, around this cantilevering um, tip. Um, so what I w uh, what I want to do is, I guess, basically understand what these what these deflections are. So. Uh, our, our plugin allows you to um, kind of get real-time feedback on, on the structure um, using uh, a couple of um, components. We have within our GG Space Gas Solver um, panel. Uh, and the main one you'll, you'll probably want to use is the Space Gas Query um, component. And this allows you to basically um, start to run automated querying. Now, this, this component um, uh, is, has another component which is quite similar to it, and this is called the design steel component. And I'll show both of these um, in a bit more detail um, uh, as we go throughout this, this part. But just for now, I'm going to leave the um, design steel component um, up there and I'll just use the query component. Now, when I bring this onto the um, canvas, I just want to make sure that uh, I've got it set to false. So I'll typically bring a Boolean toggle out um, and just make sure that's there. There's a couple of options we, we're not going to use today, but you, there are options to basically um, add this structural model to say an existing template model um, that you might have um, already built. Um, uh, this is just to, this is just whether you want to close the space gas um, application once it's run, and we probably should always do that. Um, uh, the result queries, um, which we're going to um, query the structure for, and then a couple of different options, which I'll talk about um, a little bit. Uh, a little bit later. So this is actually not the um, component I wanted. I wanted the space gas solver component. <laughs> this query component allows you to query um, models from an, ex an existing space gas model. So if you've got an, ex um, an existing space gas model that you've built and you're wanting to query results from it, then you can use, um, you can use, use this component. They, they work in quite a similar, um, quite a similar manner. But I'll just get rid of that and I'll just use the uh, space gas solver component for now. Okay, yes, but a lot of the, the inputs are the same. So what I'm wanting to do is um, I want to query the deflection uh, along, along those rafters. So in order to do that, I need to um, set up a result query. Now what that is, is basically telling um, the software which nodes you want to get displacement for in the structural model and for which load cases. So again, under the space gas solver panel, I've got a 
um, query no displacements um, component. And basically what I need to do is find those, is find, uh, find the nodes in which I'm uh, wanting to query. So typically in this instance, I'll need to couple this up with a, um, a space gas um, find or create node component, which we looked at before. And I can get the points along those uh, rafter members. So if I go back to where I've created my, um, my rafter members, uh, just find them down here. I'll have a look at my um, segments. Um, and then I've got my, my, vertice, my vertices. I can drag these vertices into, into this point and then I'm, I've collected all the nodes that I want to um, query. I can drag those, that node into here and I want to query that um, for one of my um, uh, SLS um, load cases. So basically I want to do it for both of these load combinations. So I can drag um, I can drag those cases, and what I might do is I'll flatten these nodes, I'll flatten the node input here. Now I've got two cases here, which basically is going to result in um, two result queries. So the way result queries works is they, they obviously query um, for a list of nodes for every load case. Okay, so now all I need to do is um, put in the result queries there. And then you can see that the, um, the component is ready to go. Now, there's uh, input here, analysis options now, and what this um, allows you to do is start to set some of the space gas analysis options that are available. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of um, analysis options here um, for frequency analysis, um, buckling analysis, static analysis options. So if I just click the static analysis, um, I can start to set some of these, um, you know, like um, my analysis type. So if I want to run a linear or a non-linear analysis, um, yeah, I, I can start to set these here. Um, in this instance, I'm just going to run a linear analysis. I'm not dealing with super high deflections or anything like that. You can also set your solver types and optimization methods and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, in this instance, I can, I can drag that in there if I want to. Um, okay, so just before I hit go, I'm just going to make sure that I have um, my space gas not open, and I'm going to say that I don't want to save that job. Now, uh, we've, there, is a, there is a path parameter here, um, which you're going to likely need to use and this is um, the basically the path to where your space gas um, ex executable file is so um, depending on which version of space gas you're using you might need to specify this um, uh, independently I think the default is 12.85 at the moment which is the version that um, which is the version that I'm using uh, okay so I'm just going to I'm going to run this solver now, and this this performs three steps. It basically performs a step which does a similar thing to the um, bake component, and it, it sends the model to space gas, or it creates a text file. Then it will open space gas. Text, space gas will open that text file. Um, the analysis will run, as you can see, which has just popped up there. Um, and then it will um, bring these results back in. So you can now see that I've got some uh, results here. I'll just uh, I'll just click on the panel, um, and yeah, I've got uh, no displacement results for um, SLS uh, one, SLS two. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, internalize these results. 
just so we can start to play around with them without the space gas solver resolving again. So I've got the now I've got these results. Um, I can start to have a look at what these displacement values are. So I haven't actually had to open space gas at all. Um, the uh, space gas has done the solving in the background and then I've got results back. So uh, again in the space gas solver component I can go decompose node set. I can put these um, these result sets, uh, the results that I've got out of here um, and what I might do just to make this a little bit, um, a bit a bit, a little bit simpler is just explode those. So uh, I've got two different results. And here I've got my node IDs. Um, the case, um, yeah, I mean, it's just the decomposition of the, of the results. So um, if I want to basically look at my maximum deflections, I've got maximum deflections there. I've also got a minimum deflection. And I've obviously got my results. Now these are as a, a, a vector result. Um, so I can either, um, I guess, decompose these results to get um, unit Z or uh, X or Y um, vectors, and and then start to visualize those on um, or however I want really. So uh, what I'm going to do is go back to where we um, defined the nodes and I'm just going to put a point component on there. I'm basically um, gonna grab those, uh, well, I'm gonna cast those nodes to points um, and I'm gonna take the result vector and basically just move the, move the points um, based on the result vector um, and for this instance, I really only care about the, I really only care about the um, uh, Z component of it. So I'm going to um, construct a vector And decompose the result vector or deconstruct it. And I might want to multiply to get a bit more of a better, I guess, slightly better understanding of, <laughs> of how it's um, deflecting. So I can basically start to, I can start to visualize this result um, in here as well. So if I, oh, okay, so there I, I can see, yes, I am getting, I, I am getting my anticipated um, deflection results. I'm getting a bit higher deflection, um, slightly, yeah, you know, obviously higher deflections in the internal than the external. Um, and then I can, uh, actually also um, tag these as well so I can just use a text tag um, now we, we we may start to improve the ability the, the visualization but at the moment Crosshopper does provide um, uh, reasonably good um, reasonably good uh, ways and in easyish ways to um, to uh, to visualize results. So, okay. So basically, I can see here for a um, Z component. So um, and yeah. So I can see the. So I get maximum deflection of about twenty six millimeters. So that's not too bad. Um, I guess it would have to depend on um, whatever your cantilevering is or, or whatever. So that's for, um, I guess, our, our first deflection. And then if I just um, drag the other one in, or oh, I can see I'm getting a 29 mil um, upward deflection um, there. So this is fine. I mean, but I can do this type of 
I can do this type of thing in, um, uh, in Space Gas itself without too much issue. But now maybe what I want to do is have a look at um, bringing this, um, uh, say changing around or bringing this, um, this prop back to this second one here. So what I can do is, and what I'm going to do is just, um, I'll internalize that data for now again I'll just turn this to false I'm going to go back um, to where I was doing my geometry and I'm going to go to this front cantilever and I'm just going to pull this cantilever back a little bit so now we're coming in um, into here so we've got much higher cantilever um, but um, well, we've got much longer cantilever and who knows, maybe I want to, um, maybe I've you know, also been instructed that I, I want to, um, I don't know, lift up the top, the top face. We've done some sun analysis and we want to, we want to lift up the, um, the front height of it as well now. Now, if you're using space gas to um, try and do this geometry manipulation for a curved, um, well, I guess a dub, almost doubly curved structure, um, you, you might be um, struggling to do that quite um, in a, a pretty timely, in a timely time frame. Um, so I've made those geometry manipulations. Now I can simply, um, Hit go again. And it's just gonna perform that same thing again. So it's just bit, building the model, it's doing the analysis. Um, it's giving me some results. And I'm just gonna put those results into another one. Um, and I can do a similar thing. Um, I can. If I'm wanting to compare the differences between those two, um, I can start to um, basically, although my geometry has changed slightly, um, I can now see that I've got a much higher deflection um, with my with by bringing that um, by bringing that uh, back as opposed to my earlier deflection of say 29 uh, millimeters. So I guess I can start to um, look at different section sizes and start to perform, I don't know, different types of optimizations for bays and, and stuff um, in, this, in this manner. Okay, so this is, uh, this is good. Um, but what I'm going to do now is start to set up some further re result queries um, as w with, with these node displacements as well. So I can actually create multiple um, result queries and typically what I want to um, uh, do is set up a whole range of result queries which are, which are basically the performance um, aspects of, my, of the building. So um, I'm going to... Um, set up a result query which queries the um, node reactions uh, of, of the nodes um, at the bases um, because that's going to probably drive my um, foundation design and also tell me if there's any uh, or tell me what sort of uplift I'm dealing with um, at those back um, at that back stay uh, so Again, uh, I'm just going to go and find um, where I've got my backstays. Now I've created my um, restraint nodes before, so what I can actually do is I don't um, I don't really need to um, create another create and find component. I can literally just wire that straight into there. Um, now for this case. I'm going to want to query my ultimate load combination so I can just drag 
I can drag my ultimate load um, combinations into there. And then I can simply um, hit the shift key uh, to um, add, add those, um, those result queries. So um, similar to before, I can run this analysis uh, and I'll get a result. But just before I do that, um, I also want to, I'm also going to set up a query to um, query the axial forces in my, um, in my backstay members and also my two V column members as well. So I've got a, um, a query beam forces component as well. And I'm going to query these um, for the ultimate low combinations again. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Into the load cases. Um, I'm going to get my curve elements from back here. So um, those are my those are my purlin elements, um, my front and back struts um, are here. I'm going to put those into there, and I'm also going to put in um, the, um, as a separate query, I'll put in my, um, backstay element, which I've got down here. I'm going to do these separately. So I can get separate maximum uh, maximum values for them. And I don't really care about the moments or shear forces, so I'm just going to um, select the axial force value to um, output here. So these are a little bit different um, to the uh, node reaction force queries. So for instance, um, a node reaction force query will result in um, one output result, whereas a, a beam force will result in an output result, um, totaling the number of true values that you that you place into here. So in this case, we're going to just get one because we've only got one um, true value. Okay, so I can put um, I can also wire this in. And I'm going to run that, uh, run that again. And now you can see I've got, um, I've got a multitude of outputs here. So I've got a, um, So um, I can look at my um, uh, node reaction forces. So what I might do is I'll just um, expand this even further. And once again, I can use the node set decompose component for the node reaction forces. Um, and I know my node reaction force um, uh, is branch one. So I'll drag that into there. Now main, maybe here I, I'm, I'm, um, I, I might mainly be worried about my uh, um, maximum. So I know I've got a 155 kilonewton there and a minimum of um, negative 1.8 kilonewton. So um, uh, that's looking okay in terms of um, 
my uplift um, uplift forces for uh, for my ultimate um, ultimate O1. But then if I check, my, so then if I go and check my um, ultimate O2, which is branch five, um, I'll see that I'll now I've got a, a maximum of negative 104 um, and, a, and a minimum of, of negative, six, negative 16. So I, I am getting quite, um, quite a big um, uplift force um, there. So I can do a similar thing um, with displaying these results here as well. So if I just copy, um, I copy these two and I can keep that point location because um, I'll just drag that location into there. Um, and then I should be able to see just zoom to those. Oh no, sorry, I do need to get the points that I'm looking for for um, my uh, reactions. So I'll just um, create a point component again. Drag that into the location. Um, so I can start to see, and I might just, um, so I can, I might just decompose that, um, that again, so it's not as convoluted. So I can start to see what where my where my um, reaction forces are. You you can also um, I guess do other types of visualization. So I could um, uh, I guess do a do a uh, generate a circle. And what I might do is I'll I'll make the radius um, dependent on how um, how big my my force is. Um, and I'll do multiplication as well, so I can so I can scale that, and I'll just copy this as well. I'll just get this sorted. Um, so now you can click on this circle, and now I can start to see where my um, where my big reactions are. So I can sort of see. Um, Obviously, my reactions are quite small there, and I've got a negative. I get a negative ninety-one um, in here, um, so it gives another way of, I guess, visualizing. And you can color these circles depending on whether it's a positive or, or negative or, or whatever. But it gives you another good way of displaying um, displaying your results. So, um, the last thing I'm going to show you. Oh, okay. I'll just show you how you can decompose the um, the beam force results that we that we um, have done as well. So under, this, under the space gas solver component again, I can decompose a 1D set. And I'll just go here and check which my, uh, my 1D set is. Um, and so I want to do um, 2 and 3. Uh, so I can see uh, my element IDs here and if I go um, if I go back to the um, the force query that I did here I can uh, curve elements I'm just going to internalize this data for now, so I can turn that off. Um, what I'm going to do is just make sure that I flatten this tree um, prior. I'll put that in there, and then I'll um, cast my beam elements to a curve. 
I'll bring these over here. And then I'll simply just get the middle of these. I'll get the middle of these curves. Curve middle. So I can see that these are my, um, my axial struts. So you'll notice here that I've got, um, uh, if I unflatten that again, you'll notice here that I've got um, two values for um, for each of the elements. Now, this relates to a position. So if I um, just create a panel there, excuse me, um, you'll notice that um, the position location basically gives a, a node um, a node ID for the start and end um, point of that um, of that curve element. So. I, for these strut elements, I'm not too worried about the difference between the, I guess, the, the top and the, um, or the start and the end variations in, um, in the forces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the maximum um, uh, of those two values. I oh, know, I'll actually, what I might do is I might take the, the average, so then we'll get um, both um, uh, uh, compression and tension values. So now I've got um, 17, if I, if I flatten that, I'll have uh, 18 values and I've got 18 points. Um, then I can simply um, copy this text tag again to get a bit of a, an understanding on where these values um, are occurring. And you can see here, I've got um, yeah, 70 and then um, reasonably even distribution in my um, axial forces as we go around here. And you can, um, I guess, start to visualize these in a, in a slightly better manner as well as you go. I'll just remove that.